Howdy. Hello, this is Kevin Soda from The Porch. Um, today uh, we're going to talk about SpaceX and other things. Um, I'm not an Elon Musk fan, but we all saw a big launch from NASA this weekend. I came across an article uh, from last summer again that had to do with uh, the Apollo uh, uh, 50th anniversary. It's hard to believe that we've, it's been that long since people went to the moon. I remember as a kid watching the stress from the Apollo 13. Um, I'm not sure I actually saw the, the l lunar landing except for fleeting uh, television uh, news programs uh, at the time because I was only uh, seven years old when they landed on the moon. But later I did see the later flights in Apollo tensions and the fears we had with that one. It's easier to love Apollo 11 if you were around to see it happen, was the article from last year's Time Magazine. Um, in the article, it uh, starts talking about memories and then it goes on to the present day. Um, last weekend, uh, my friend uh, from China, uh, Willy Wong, who works for NASA, uh, was able to uh, contact me just as the rockets lifted off in um, Florida <laughs> and I was able to chat with him a bit uh, about his uh, his joy at the work uh, that he's been up to. Um, he works out of Silicon Valley and I'm not sure if he works in an Elon Musk office or a, uh, excuse me, SpaceX office or not, but he, he works for NASA and he was overjoyed. And it's great to see young people uh, getting excited about uh, space uh, and seeing what we can do about getting out into the universe and exploring things. Uh, but as far as memories go, uh, this article is really cool. It starts out by saying, for those who didn't camp along Cape Kennedy Causeway to watch the Saturn V lift off on July 16, 1969, are huddled around a rabbit ear TV to watch Neil Armstrong climb down the ladder and walk on the surface of the moon four days later, it'll all have a whiff of cable channel documentary. And yet, it doesn't for Elon Musk. Musk was born in 1971 in Pretoria, South Africa, two years after Apollo 11 uh, landing and half a world away from the country that achieved the great lunar feat. But somehow he absorbed the primal power of the thing he was not there to see. Apollo 11 was one of the most inspiring things in all of human history, he said. In a July 12 interview at the Hawthorne, California headquarters of SpaceX, the rocket company he founded in 2002 that has since become its own icon of space exploration. I'm not sure SpaceX would exist if, it, if not for Apollo 11. Duh. <laughs> Anyway, today SpaceX is one of a handful of power pl players, starry-eyed billionaires and world's two richest countries competing in a race to set up shop on the moon. In the 1960s, it was a two-party sprint between the US and the Soviet Union to be the first to get boots on the lunar uh, surface. But this time around, the US finds itself in a bigger multi-font competition with uh, private companies like SpaceX and Jeff Bezos Blue Origin and international powers, most critically China, and uh, of course, Virgin Airlines. Uh, like the Soviet Union and the US during the Cold War, Beijing is using its space ambitions as a powerful ideological and even expansionist tool of statecraft. This may be why Trump is so big on it right now. In January, China successfully landed uh, Change E4, a small uh, base station and rover on the far side of the moon becoming the first nation to touch down in the unseen hemisphere. We are building Ch China into a space giant, Change E4's chief designer Wu Weiran said at the time. I wonder if we've seen any images from China on that. Anyway, last year, Ye Beijian, the leader of the country's lunar program, described the agency's work by invoking Beijing's growing domination dominance across the South China Sea Islands. The universe is an ocean. The moon is the Dayo Islands. Mars is Hongguan Island. If we don't go there now, even though we're capable of doing so, then we will be blamed by our descendants. 
Hmm. Uh, people forget that one of the big reasons we got out of the space race uh, so much after the 1970s was it was more expensive than our defense department. Uh, we have to be balanced and yeah, let the private sector do its job. Uh, but I don't want to get in an expensive space race with China. And uh, luckily the uh, new space force uh, the troopers of Trump, uh, they aren't spending much money on it yet. Uh, last year, Ye Peijian, the leader uh, of the country's lunar program, described the agency's work by invoking Beijing's growing uh, dominance across the South China Sea Islands, uh, as noted above. That may be just a uh, celestial saber rattling, but it's gotten the attention of Western observers. I have no doubt that within the next five years, they will complete their own space station, says Joan Johnson Fries, a professor of national security affairs with expertise in space uh, science and technology at the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island. Driving the new space race is a potent mix of economic, technological, and geopolitical imperatives. There are possible fortunes to be made from lunar ventures. Space-based businesses uh, currently contribute $350 billion to global gross domestic products, a figure projected to jump to $1.4 trillion by 10, 2040. I think that's an underestimate. According to Morgan Stanley, the moon could become a first outpost in efforts to colonize. Hmm. Anybody volunteer? <laughs> I guess that's one way to do social distance, huh? Uh, exploiting the space. Just one example. There's intense speculation about the fortune to be made from mining the moon for rare earth metals used in electronics manufacturing. Hmm. I hope they have some metals up there. That would be cool, but I don't know if I want them landing uh, back on Earth. With current space tech, spacecraft tech, that fortune is canceled out fast by the billions of dollars it would cost to ship goods between Earth and the Moon. But technology changes and no one wants to be left out of the potential lunar gold rush. Yeah, I remember years ago they talked about having some sort of elevator to space and that would make things a lot cheaper. There are scientific and technological reasons to go to the moon too. Observatories on the lunar far side shielded from the Earth's shine and the earthly radio emissions would be more powerful and see farther than telescopes on the surface of the planet or orbiting it. And while NASA has been known to oversell the commercial spin-offs from the space program off the Earth, for the Earth is one of the agency's slogans, by now shopworn, there's no denying the decades of evidence that technology first developed for space travel often has terrestrial applications like scratch-proof glass, a lightweight high storage batteries that make cordless tools possible, memory foam and fireproof fabric, and most significantly GPS navigation all had their origins and systems designed for exploring space. Uh, future benefits could include applications in artificial intelligence, of course, biometric sensors and air traffic control, as well as crop fertilizers and greenhouses, uh, LEDs, uh, adapted from systems now in development for establishing otherworldly agriculture. Hmm. Then too, there is the fact that any road to Mars likely runs straight to the moon. Hmm. That's not necessarily true, but okay. Homesteading a world that is only three days from Earth is the best way to test the life support infrastructure that would be needed on a far more distant and a good deal less barren Mars. All the lunar competitors are eyeballing the same spot on the surface as the South Pole, which is as close to a fertile crescent as exists on the moon. The southern craters cast in permanent shadow are home to plentiful deposits of water ice which could be used to sustain humans and their crops. The water can be broken down into oxygen, which can then be used as atmosphere for crews and hydrogen, which recombined with the oxygen can make a simple, powerful and clean rocket fuel. Wrestling water and rocket fuel off Earth for a deep space mission is a lot harder and a more labor intensive than carrying it from the moon, where the gravity is one sixth that of Earth and then parking it on a lunar orbit. Spacecraft on the other on their way to Mars could, in theory, stop by the moon to top off their tanks before lighting out for deeper space. Mm. Mm. 
None of that is outside the reach of current technology, but since the final Apollo lunar mission returned home in 1972, NASA's crewed space programs have pursued much narrower goals, goals contenting itself with dog paddling in low Earth orbit. And since the final NASA space shuttle stood down in 2011, the U.S. has not even had its own way to get the astronauts to space until this weekend. All right. I'm not uh, gung-ho on spending a lot of money on space, but I think if businesses are, that's uh, wonderful. I think um, we need to get away from this war of uh, space that they're planning between China and the United States. Um, I think uh, we need to back off, we need to work together, uh, make uh, partnerships and not always uh, uh, think the worst of Chinese scientists. Um, on the other hand, we have to also worry uh, about our lack of cooperation with many other countries around the world, which who could be working with us on programs to improve the world as well as outer space. Uh, we don't have good alliances. The President Trump has basically frayed most alliances, including the NATO alliance, the most enduring alliance from uh, post-World War II. Um, we must demand and expect better from our government. And uh, we must also have uh, a peaceful road in space, less peaceful than what they're talking about in this article where China uh, dominates and then the U.S. tries to catch up or vice versa. Um, it's something to pray about and it's something to demand because financially here on earth, we need to still take care of our people and we haven't been. Um, coronavirus is, is spreading. Uh, at a higher rate here in Missouri than it did uh, a week or two back and that had to do with the opening up of the state and the uh, Memorial Day uh, um, events and now protests of the last week have had more people in contact. We pray that there'll be less stress but these are important things we're facing here on earth. Okay, but I'm glad those um, uh, two astronauts made it into space this last weekend and um, um, the kind of throwback to the old days where we launch a kind of uh, small cone on top of a plane, uh, a huge rocket and send it into outer space. It's really uh, cool that we could see that again. You know, they were just doing space shuttles. They were on the side of the uh, rockets and it really didn't look good and it was less stable than what this is. Um, anyway, we're happy you guys made it up to outer space and we hope that others can too, even if they're uh, just tourists. Okay, uh, we'd rather have tourists than these uh, people who are interested in having space for us. All the best to you and this is the news from the porch.